If you have your Bibles, I would ask that you would stand as it is our custom. We'll be reading Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 5, out of the contemporary English version. That's Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. And there it reads, the apostles and the followers in Judea heard the Gentiles had accepted God's message. So when Peter came to Jerusalem, some of the Jewish followers started arguing with him. They wanted Gentile followers to be circumcised, and they said, you stay in the homes of Gentiles, and you even ate with them. Then Peter told them exactly what happened. He said, I was in the town of Joppa, and I was praying when I fell sound asleep, and I had a vision. I saw heaven open up, and something like a, a huge sheet fell by its four corners, and it came down to me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This morning, I would like us to marinate on the topic, who is in and who is out. When did God put us in charge? Go ahead and touch your neighbor on the kneecap and say, neighbor, who's in? Who's out? When did God put us in charge? concern 
learned colleagues. Uh, there was no scrutiny when Jesus told the disciples that you will receive power uh, when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem. You are going to proclaim and preach the good news of the gospel over in Samaria and you are going to proclaim and be my witness even until the end of the earth.
about the power of the resurrection, but when Peter came back into that city of Jerusalem, he was prosecuted, he was persecuted, and held guilty as charged by the courts of public opinion. Uh, there was no long line of volunteers that signed up with, with Peter to take that 30 mile journey from Joppa over to Caesarea that just happened to take two days. And, and as soon as the church folks found out that the people outside the customary traditions of the church now had access to climb the stairway to heaven, all of a sudden, a Peter encountered some criticizing church folks that had some concerns. Peter had to deal with hostile people in a holy place. And as he went back on the road, city of Jerusalem. Peter's homecoming was abruptly interrupted by other people's attitudes. On his way back to Jerusalem, rather than coming Jesus, keep me near the cross. He has to navigate the murky waters of church town in the midst of being uh, inside the sanctuary. Uh, perhaps, just like Peter, you have done everything that God has called you to do. You have followed uh, what God has placed on the inside of you from the very beginning. Perhaps somebody in this sanctuary is trying their best to figure out exactly how are you going to deal uh, with hostile people in a holy place. Uh, perhaps, just like Peter, you, you have the call that God has placed on your life. Perhaps just like Peter, uh, no one was there for you when you were doing the best that you can. No one was there for you when you were being persecuted by the court of public opinion. But the very moment that the divine orchestration of the Holy Ghost begins to move and operate in the background of your life, all of a sudden people want to regulate God's activity. Their preconceived notions of the law, their understanding. 
was in the tradition of the church. No, Peter did not respond by condescendingly engaging and confronting them about the political correctness of his unwarranted criticism. Peter said, I'm going to do the best that I can.